move on and bring Simon into the conversation. And Craig's being so patient down there. Thank you, Craig. Um, and Glenn mentioned this term ageing in place, which means seeing out our days at home, basically. Um, Simon is the co-founder and CEO of Five Good Friends. Simon, I really enjoy hearing the story behind the name of your company. Would you mind sharing that story with our guests? Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you Kay. Uh, so, Five Good Friends, we're seven years young. Um, we're a new home care organisation and picking up on Brad's point, our job is really to ensure Glenn and Craig have to wait for as long as possible to get the money, really. <laughs> so, to provide the sorts of services and support that you need uh, to continue living well here in this beautiful community. But when we started the business, we didn't really just want to focus on the idea of what sort of supports and help can we get into the home. We thought we'll ask a really different question. And that question was, why do people live wonderfully long, engaged and happy lives in the homes and the communities that they love? And we researched down that and we found this wonderful talk. It's a TED talk, if you like to go on to, uh, to the internet and search it. It's done by a fellow named Dan Butner. And it's a global study sponsored by National Geographic. And they identified these pockets around the world where people regularly live to 100 years of age in their homes and in their communities. And they looked at what were the commonalities of those communities. And as you'd expect, they looked at things like diet and exercise and all those sorts of things that we hear about. But they dug a little deeper and they looked into the social constructs of these communities and the social constructs of the people together. And they found that the key determinant to a long, happy and healthy life is actually friendships. Uh, or more importantly, the number of friendships. So on average, people in these communities were travelling through life with between five and six good friends. And we heard that word and we heard five good friends and we thought, that's a really, really important purpose for us. It's not about the care and the service, it's about keeping people connected to their friends, their families, their communities and the life that they love. Uh, and as you can probably tell, I've got a little bit of a lisp. So saying six good friends would have got really hard the whole time. We thought five good friends has much nicer alliteration. And so we decided to choose the lower number only because it was easier for me to say. <laughs> and can I just let you know that Ita Buttros was an ambassador for um, five good friends. So you could imagine the conversation around the board table. <laughs> Yes, very true. Um, but there, there's some really exciting emerging um, science around longevity, and I really encourage you all to, to seek out more and, and listen to that TED talk by Dan Butner. Uh, this podcast, there's so much information out there about, um, about how we're, we're really pushing the boundaries and we're living longer and we're, we're living healthier <laughs> lives. Um, so we're not living, unfortunately, in Japan or Sardinia, which are a couple of the blue zones, but how can we create it here, Simon? What sort of services does Five Good Friends bring to a village like Brooklyn? Yeah, so look, our number one service, and it's really what Glenn touched on, and it's actually also what Kay started with, um, you know, one of the key things to growing older well, ageing in place, is actually having a plan. And part of that plan should be considering help, support, care, whatever you want to talk about. Um, and too many of us don't actually factor that in. We don't really want to open up to the idea that we may, we may need it. So we really should be considering that and having that and understanding that there will be a point where we might need it. So the number one service that we really offer is free um, and is advice. And that's the role of the concierge that Glenn was talking about. Uh, generally, they're, they're, they're nurses. They're really skilled in the dark art of my age care. And for those of you who have engaged it or have had to take friends or family or, or parents through it, it is a dark art uh, in understanding that. And we're able to help and guide people. And our real goal is to get them into the funding program, to get them to understand what they can need and they can use. And if we do a good job at that, well, then maybe you'll uh, honour us or give us the honour of actually then looking at providing you supports and services. And that can be everything from simple domestic support, assistance with meal prep, things like that, uh, to transportation. Uh, and as we get older and as we have more care needs, it can move up into, uh, into nursing. 
But there's one very interesting study, and um, home care is an interesting thing. It hasn't been researched enough, but it was done by Macquarie University down in Sydney. And they looked at the efficacy or the, the, the impact that, that, that home care can have. And they found that for every extra hour of help you get into someone's home, you will reduce their likelihood of entering residential aged care by 6%. And the most important things to start with are the simplest. It is actually uh, social connection, maintaining connection with the community, getting out to the shops, doing things. A little bit of domestic support, very simple things like that so that we can continue to, to grow older well. Another thing that came out of my doing this series on ageing was the realisation that it's inevitable. We're all heading in the same direction. And I found that um, quite confronting um, because it happens to other people, it doesn't happen to me. But, uh, and then the more I sat with that, the more I realised to have that plan to think about the possibilities, because it's inevitable, yeah. um, that's what will give you peace of mind. Your Five Good Friends is already operating here at Brooklyn, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, that's right. So uh, we have a concierge who comes out and uh, there are a number of residents um, that we are helping and that we are providing um, services to. Um, and so we're very, very grateful for that um, opportunity. But as we said, the concierge is there uh, for residents. You'll see them uh, around the village. They run um, some talks and things on things like brain health and nutrition. Uh, but they're really there just to meld into the fabric of the village and to be there for people when they do want to start having those questions about what we need. And sadly, I think one of the things we see is people do leave those conversations too long. Needs are, uh, are escalating um, and we should be starting sooner with simple things. And, and Simon, uh, just tapping into your, your experience in this field, what effect do you think living in a retirement village can have on a person and their their longevity? What are the benefits well, or the advantages? I'm on this team here. I mean, um, it's the most common thing that we heard, and my co-founder and partner, um, Nathan Betteridge, his uh, parents have just moved into uh, a retirement village, and they said, we cannot believe that it took us so long to do this. Uh, and quite often what we see in people is a real bump in their overall, a lift in their overall health and wellness and engagement. Um, you're all of a sudden in a community. Um, and I would argue for some people, it's actually the first almost subconscious decision about getting some support and help around them to, uh, to help them uh, grow older well. So we are massive, massive fans of it for, for all of those reasons. I know Glenn's parents uh, also. Uh, yeah. Uh, my parents moved into our Sanford village about uh, two years ago. Unfortunately, Dad passed last year, um, so it gave me a. I was I was calm about the fact that my mother wasn't by herself in her own home. There was this community of like-minded people. Um, now I can't contact her. She's <laughs> she's too busy. I, I ring her and uh, um, now I'll get back to you. And it takes a couple of days to get back to me, but that's that's fantastic. You know, um, so, you know, she's getting really engaged in Sanford and with Dad's passing, it was absolutely ideal. Uh, Simon, I'm keen to bring Craig in, but just in closing, um, why, why do you think there's that resistance? You know, you, you mentioned people leave it too long. Why do, why do we resist? Um, I just think it's human nature. I just don't think we own up to some of the realities um, that uh, are around us. Um, and sometimes it's hard to have a conversation to say, oh, I think I might need uh, a little bit of uh, help here or a little bit of support or I need to change my environment. Um, but we just need to think about it a little bit different. We need to think about that the change is about growing older well, it's about continuing and enhancing mm. lifestyle and what we have. And probably preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much, Simon. Yeah.